You have to have uh, the only person about this thing in now is the maker. <laughs> <laughs> we got that, no worries. <laughs> you alright? What, what is bothering you, Cedric? Hugh asks. Um, well, there's something weird happened to me again, and um, I thought it best if I tell you two first, because I tend to trust you two the most as of right now. Um, I trust you as well. Um, when I shook Connor's hand, hmm. uh, I had sort of... You said it was like a vision, right? Mm -hmm. Out of a vision, head. yep. I had a vision. Um, I didn't see anything, but I heard screaming. And it wasn't pleasant. What it, manner of screaming? Um, I'm assuming it was like bad, like <laughs> like some some. Like, Did you dying? either? It <laughs> sounded like someone was absolutely terrified of something, but you don't know what that person was terrified of. You can't tell if it was a man or a woman. It's very unclear, but you can clearly hear a sense of utter terror, terror, terror in the voice and some sort of explosion or destruction crashing. Some, maybe it was even like thunder and lightning. You can't, it's hard to tell, but something in the background was rumbling when this was happening. Right. I, it was hard to make out who was screaming, but it was definitely out of complete and utter fear. And after that, there was a loud boom or bang. Um, and it was only for a second. Hmm. An omen, perhaps? Maybe something that's going to happen in the future? Just mere speculation, Hugh says. I don't know, um, but it was very troubling to me. Uh, Have you ha had these visions before? Not, not like this. We've had all of our normal, and he'll, <laughs> if air quotes haven't been invented yet, he'll invent them right now and say normal <laughs> <laughs> visions. Um, but this was not like one of them. It was darker. Oh. Hmm. I've had a similar vision. Not not the same as yours. Mine I am still trying to understand it. But mine was I sincerely believe Andraste on her holy pyre. Well, You've had How... one, I've had one, and we're already connected. It's definitely not a coincidence. I've stopped believing much is a coincidence at this point. How did your vision make you feel? Um, again, out of character, I'm not sure if like it did anything. I'm... I'm assuming um, he, he would have been shaken, but yeah, I don't know if it, like... I think you would have been shaken. I don't think that your feeling was the same as as Halisair's. I wouldn't say it was the same. I would say it was different. Okay. More foreboding uh, or definitely something that shook you up. Yeah. Uh, it, it frightened me, to be honest. Uh, so much so that I, I just needed to be alone with my thoughts for a little bit. Of course. And that's when you touched the boy. Yes. Do I didn't want to bring it up uh, while he was there because I didn't want to frighten him or frighten anyone else since we were in a public area. Of course. Area. That's wise. Do you feel that this was <sighs> I 
do you feel that perhaps it was a vision? Do you feel it was caused by the boy? Or in reaction to the boy? That I cannot know for sure. Mm. But it's always a possibility. Of um, course. Huge. Much as these things... Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, much as these things may pain us to review, perhaps when you have a moment, you should meditate on this. And if you need to be alone, this is good. And if you need company, I will be here to help. Hugh, I'm sure, will be here to help as well. Take heart, though. You seem to know as much of the chant as I at this point, so please remember, our lady took the hand, to, took our hands from our eyes and said, remember this fire. You must pass through it alone to be forged anew and look, look upon the light so you may lead others here through this darkness. Think on that. Yes, I think, I think I uh, would like to meditate alone for now. I'll be uh, here when you need. I wonder if any of the others have had such visions as the two of you have. I will... I, I trust you in this matter, Halasair. Um, if you wish to reveal this to any of the other group members, I, I give you my permission. Um, if you feel like they have more in, would have more insight or you want to know if they've also experienced something hmm. uh, I give you my permission to say that I have also experienced this very well I'll think on it as well thank you find peace my friend thank you does Halicer Excuse herself. Excuse herself? Halicera will excuse herself, and when she leaves, uh, Hugh will actually turn towards Cedric and ask, and said, there's actually something I wish to ask you as well, Cedric, if you do not mind. Of course, Hugh. He says, I was wondering how you felt about the others knowing about the situation of which brought us to meet each other in the first place on the ship. Several people have started asking me about it, and I admit I have kept certain details vague, because I was not sure if it was my place to explain fully the circumstances. What what details have you left out? I left the, f the uh, method in which I found you, which was inside of that box knowing nothing about what had happened to you prior. I, I thank you for your discrepancy in that, in that matter. Um, but if people in the group have started to ask questions, I will address, I will address it. Um, there's been something that I've been meaning to say to the group for a while now anyway especially since it seems like this could turn into be a long adventure and it's better to just get everything out on the table. I believe that would be wise, yes. Lest you feel the need to do that for the benefit of the group as a whole. Yes, I think it's the step in the right direction towards everyone starting to trust each other a little more. He will nod. Now, if you'll excuse me, Hugh, I, I need to be alone for a little bit. Of course. Cedric uh, would just kneel, uh, like, or, yeah, like, get in, like, kind of like a prayer mm -hmm. stance and uh, just keep repeating, uh, blessed are they 
who stand before the corrupt and the wicked and do not falter. Blessed are the peacekeepers, the champions of just. Blessed are the righteous, the light and the shadow, and their blood the will, the maker's will is written. And he'll he'll kind of like be clutching like his shirt where uh, his yeah. necklace He's, would be, but mm-hmm. it's not. Mm-hmm. And he just continue to say that over and over again as he meditates. Okay. God, you guys are such downers. <laughs> <laughs> we have to keep you guys in check somehow. <laughs> That's the balance. Overly happy, overly dreary, we're good. <laughs> yeah, we're even. The yeah. reception continues on, and my question is if anyone is doing anything during the reception before we go to your meeting with the new senior enchanter. No? Oh, no. no, just um, Thea will drink and be merry with Malcolm and Cogs. Okay. I don't see anything significant unless they want to mention something. Uh, again, while you're chatting with, with um, Malcolm, again, you're, you're, you're still very impressed by this man. He seems to know his way around the uh, ledger and business and all that good stuff. And then Cogs, uh-huh. he's... It's... Cogs is so interesting because he acts like a child almost all the time, and yet he's brilliant. Like you can, the the yeah. way that he's able to marry both science and magic together and understand mm-hmm. the relationship between the two of them is just, it's just, wow. This guy <laughs> yeah. knows what he's talking about. And Theo would have a lot of questions about that, and um, particularly the use of lyrium with engineering and things like that. Yeah. So it would be. He would, um, out of character, how much would Theo know about Dagna? What happened to her? How much do you want him to know from a narrative standpoint? How much would you want him to know about From a story standpoint, I can't imagine he'd know the story. All all I've seen from uh, the season so far is that she was missing. (laughs) Janar would, yeah, I think Janar knows the fate of his daughter, so he would have probably oh. told you. Okay, okay. So, you know, you know what, you know what would happen. I don't know if you mentioned anything about. Yeah, that. no. If if that's that's why I asked if if he knew that Diana was dead, then he wouldn't have brought her. I think you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, but Cog seems to be very excited. I think that while you're having that conversation, he slips something about how. He's very excited about this this new airship that he's working on, and that uh, you pretty soon you might end up seeing more airships around Thetis, like commercially. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, how did that come about? Oh, that's my business venture with Grinnell. She's helping me. <laughs> Seems like a, a, an ambitious undertaking. Uh, we we have the technology for this. She says, says, oh yes, we absolutely do. I have the plans right here. He says as he holds up, he holds up like a, a, like a parchment that he's got rolled up in his, in his hand. Okay. Uh, I'm presuming Theo wouldn't be able to read any of it. No, he's, it seems like, like, it seems like uh, he's kind of keeping that to himself for the time being. Okay. Sorry, he says, Grinnell says I have to keep this very safe. It's very valuable. That's, that's fine. That's fine. Um, what what do you intend to use them for? Oh, uh, these are plans uh, to hopefully mass produce the the airships so that people can use them for trade or for traveling to see your loved ones back and forth. This this is huge. This is a ginormous undertaking. It would be tremendously helpful. Oh yes, this technology would completely change the face of Thetis forever. That's amazing. Think of all the great things we could do, all the people we could help, if every single nation had their own set of airships. Absolutely. This is this is fantastic. I mean, if I can help in any way, I'd be glad to. Oh, well, if you want to help invest, I'm sure you can talk to Grinnell. He's the one who sort of takes care of the business side. I just build things. And and how is that? Ah, <laughs> how is that going, my friend? Building things. Building. 
How is the building going? Oh, like well, uh, I haven't actually started my new airship, the next airship, because I still need funding. But that's what Grinnell's helping me with. Well, that's brilliant. Uh, I look forward to seeing your work in the future, Cogs. Oh, uh, I hope so. Uh, it would be great to be able to help everybody. Of course. We, we all want to help everybody. It's a noble goal. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he will he, raise a glass with uh, Malcolm and Cogs. Cogs will raise up his apple juice. Yes, his apple juice. <laughs> <laughs> He'll drink. All right. Well, after all of that, the heroes, or actually the guardians of the Pentaviv, the Pentaviv guardians is what I call you, will find themselves back in Gwinnale's office with his new, brand new, shimmering senior enchanter robes. <laughs> yep. Um, and uh, Connor will be there as well with you. Once everyone gets um, in there, they have to send for them to meet and such. Uh, Grinnell would apologize that he oh, sorry, could not get to them sooner. He wanted to give them his full attention um, for whatever um, is it that, that they came here to seek him out for and such, since they said they would speak again. Oh, very good. Well, uh, congratulations, by the way. <laughs> yes, congratulations. Indeed, it was a good ceremony. Theo's back at the smooth skin potion. Maybe if we added some <laughs> <laughs> uh, So, uh, I think we we're going to tell you about our trip to the uh, the crossroads, yes? Yes. Um, or maybe death route? We've tried that one. We've already tried that. Connor says it made them look look bright pink, hot pink instead of blue. It was an itchy, bright pink. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. I, I, well, I guess I think I should probably say stump something first. Yes, Alice. Yes. Your choices oh. are yours. Yeah. It sounds like a good idea. All right. Well, we we came here, uh, uh, Senior Janta, to talk about our trip and these, and I'm going to uh, hold out my bracer. Gwenelle, you notice that every sing that five of the people here um, have these golden bracers around their wrists with different types of gems um, uh, decorating them. So for, for um, Cedric, it's, I believe, Topaz? I think I said Cedric was Topaz. Uh, I corrected myself because I said Citrine, but it's actually Topaz because Topaz, topaz is more yellow than it. Citrine. Um, Ruby, for Halas Ruby for Halasair, Sapphire for mm -hmm. Andrea, Emerald for Theoben, and Diamond for, um, for Kenna. And you can definitely right. sense a magic, a very powerful energy from them, primal in nature. Ah, yes. I was wondering if this was more just a group accessory item. <laughs> like we're in a band they or something. Have those. We, we haven't known each other that long. <laughs> <laughs> I, we, we came across some things uh, in, in the Fade, and we woke up with these on. And um, I will... Uh, admit to you that I am uh, a mage and I'm pretty adept with primal magic and that's what this is, I know that much but I don't know why it's there and I don't know what it means I see Maybe the glitter dust is what makes this skin pink <laughs> <laughs> And you would like me to help you look into the answers on what these bracelets are? Any answers would be good. Yes. If they come from the Fade, it goes over to his desk. And he uses magic and unlocks the, um, sh um, unlocks the um, shard. The shard. Okay. Yep. <laughs> 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 it 
<laughs> and okay, so you take out the shard. And then What's that? You take out you you remove the shard from its casing, and then what do you do? He takes a moment with that and contacts um, the spirit of hope at Feline, and then and starts examining it with his spirit magic with her help. The shard starts to glow, this golden glow, and you aim the shard towards the bracer that I guess you're going to do Andrea's bracer. Not that it matters. Yes. It doesn't really matter whose bracers you so do. You'll get, it, um, it, yes. you'll get the same information regardless. The, um, the, the shard will start to swirl and all of you guys, like you probably have never seen anything quite like this. Like this is an artifact. Like you sure. might have run into magic items here and there, but this is the real deal. And uh, the Andrea, you can definitely sense an extremely powerful, powerful force coming from this thing. Okay. So close. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but uh, an image does appear uh, for Gwenael, and um, I'll say that Gwenael will recognize the image to be an Avarian. Uh, the location of an Invarian tribe um, that seems to be uh, fulfilled with eagles. There's a there's a there's an Invarian tribe that is filled with eagles. Um, you don't see any Avar there, just the eagles. All right. Seems I see Avar. And flocks of eagles. Odd. Eagles. No, Ava, Ava people. Kenna, you know that Rovas's uh, keep is called Eagle's Reach. Yeah. Can we see what he sees through the shard? He can show it to you, yes. If he shows it towards your direction, he can. She's going to walk over to him and ask if she can see it. Yes, perhaps this would mean something more to you. Uh, more familiar with your land. Um, yeah, this is Eagle's Reach. It's an Averhold in the Frostbacks. Frostbacks? Hmm. What does this All mean? Right. All right, so you discover these bracelets inside the Fade, and it, sho and it shows Ava. Perhaps this is a place of origin for them. I don't know about this that. connects to it in some way. Hmm? Well, the bracers, they're in my legends. They're part in of your my legend. stories. Yes. Hugh pipes up and says, perhaps that is where we need to go to get answers about them. I don't know what answers you're going to find there. Last time I was there, it was just blood and Darkspawn. That's probably why you don't see any people in that image there. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Me too. Could it be possible that any of them survived? Maybe they escaped? Hugh asks. Yeah, so people nice. are quite hardy. I've been looking, but I haven't found anybody. Maybe they've returned. Maybe, maybe a few lived. I, um, I'm not sure. I could try a bit of scrying there with um with my magic of dowsing and the shard. But before I move on to that, I have more questions in regards to these shards. Um, that's not sorry to play. These bracelets. Yes. They are definitely um, give off a very powerful magic. Tell me, if you uh, have you discovered what they might do? Sure. Um, do you have a drink? Yes. <sighs> I'm going to chill it. <laughs> she takes the drink in her hand, and she actually ends up freezing the liquid in the drink. You didn't cast a spell for that. I did not. That's the, that's the bracer. The bracer did it, not her, specifically. And the magics? 
uh, these enchantments. Are they as wieldy for, um, for any others as well? These all seem to be elemental abilities throughout our bracers. Mine is fire. Mine is electricity. I've got ether. It's definitely got some glitter dust in it. <laughs> <laughs> Which potion are you holding up right now, Theoban? Just out of curiosity. Uh, the uh, Gwenael's um, smoother skin potion that she was struggling with that was making skin. While you're holding onto the potion, you you notice that this, the potion itself is starting to swirl without you shaking it. Almost like the mineral sediments within the potion are kind of being manipulated by your hand. Oh, interesting. Does, does it normally do that? No, Grinnell. Hmm? <laughs> no, it gets close to that. <laughs> he holds, holds out kind of his hand, grasping the potion to Gwinnell to show what it's doing. Roll a magic roll for me. Um, the Obin. A magic roll. Magic roll for you. I know it's going to be low. I just know. I just want to. I'm curious what the value is. All sixes. Let's go. Ah, oh, all fives. So close. <laughs> what is it? Wow. Fifteen. Oh, okay. When you show show. I, I guess it's. Uh, I guess it's Cog's influence. <laughs> so so um. You actually manage to make the sedimentary minerals that are in this concoction start to uh, form a shape. What shape do you form it into? Can I, can I make it look like a pint of ale? Yeah, you can. <laughs> so it actually looks like a okay. crude looking outline of a, of a, 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 a mug of ale, perhaps. <laughs> Like, you that can see it through the cool. potion. No, what is that, a bath? No, no, that's a mug. <laughs> yes. I use a mug. I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> oh, I will focus on the glass of water. Roll a magic roll for me, which is probably going to be ridiculously good for you, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> is it prime, primal? Yeah, sure. Sweet deal. <laughs> be really bad if you got lower than the Nope. That's what I'd expect. What is it? <laughs> 20. 20. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so basically, um, uh, with that glass of water, Andrea goes all waterbender. Waterbender <laughs> with it. She's like manipulating the water out of the glass, like forming these intricate little shapes, like lattices and having it flowing all around. It's very, very visually impressive before it fall flew like flows back into the glass again hmm. oh that's cool he is gonna just put that glass back down that, that's super cool <laughs> show yeah. off pretty how, how pretty can show I, off how can i do this he turns to Gwinnell. how how can i do this what what's happening it seems that it's letting you tap into just an aspect uh, um an aspect of magic itself for the basic elements fascinating Usually, from what I've seen, such en um, enchantments are too hard to be woven in, to be folded. Especially for a dwarf, Co uh, yeah, Connor I'm says. Yeah, I'm not supposed to be able to do this. No offense, he says. None taken. We don't do magic. That's your shit. <laughs> um, uh, uh, since senior enchanter, might, might I bring up something else that's kind of odd? Um, we've all got, like, matching birthmarks. What? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah, here, um, well, mine's kind of obscene, but check out anybody else's. <laughs> I, I don't mind seeing her birthmark again. <laughs> <laughs> here, here we'll approach Gwinnell and show him Unless, his right uh, Not to inquire exactly where that is, I suppose. Back. Lower back. <laughs> yeah. Just extreme lower back. <laughs> ah. 
Theo is going to show his right temple to Gwinnell with the birthmarks on his right when, temple. When, when Andrea says lower back, Connor, Connor his like, eyebrows kind of raise <laughs> when she says <laughs> that. <laughs> We're going to have to see and make sure you have all of them are matching. <laughs> <laughs> See, so you managed to get your shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, she she'll actually show back of her hand as well. Um. So, what does the birthmarks look like? Stars. Scars. Stars. Stars. Five pointed stars. Stars. It's a star. Yes. And are they all? They're all different colors, right? Well, right now they're not glowing so oh, no okay they're not glowing at the moment they're not reacting to anything okay can i make a roll to see how much i recognize this uh obvious um obvious probably like a very pentacle thingy or whatever you can try go ahead you're not sh positive beyond that people with like distinguishably shaped birthmarks that tends to be some sort of a omen whether positive or negative for that person, for that particular person. I don't know if you are aware of anyone who has had matching, a group of people that have matching birthmarks. That's kind of odd. Yes. Would you recognize a symbol of any importance? I feel like that's something that you'd recognize. No, I would say not. I wouldn't say it, so. Okay. This is a lot of stuff for me to have to look into, but. You know, many believe that um, distinct birthmarks are an omen. Seems the fact that they all match. Yes. Yes. Indeed we do. A good omen or a ba bad omen, Connor asks. In my opinion, there is no good or bad omens. My birthmark. If a bad omen is given, then that is a warning, which is good. If a good omen is good, then you know good things are to come. So how could any omen be better, good or bad? It is your choices that make the omen good or bad. Yes, exactly. So we don't know anything Unless about these, basically. <laughs> Not yet, I don't. But, <sighs> indicates to his uh, personal library, <laughs> I can certainly find out. Well, it was all very odd. I was... I was into Vinter, and then my birthmark started to hurt, and it pushed me toward an Olivion, and I went through. That. So, are you saying it drew you to it, or something? It did, bit... and if I tried to walk away from the Olivion, it pained me. My experience something... was the same. Mine as well. Mm -hmm. Same. Yes, I knew it. Something big is happening here. It's not every... I knew as soon as I saw a bear in my bedroom <laughs> that there was something special going to happen. <sighs> this... Last time people were drawn together from other forces, drawn to a single point or whisked away, a blight was stopped. I think, I feel that this is something big, and if, I, and if you're good friends with um, Mel Cummins with that, and I judge for you people be good, this only has to be good. I wish I could give you more answers right now. Yes. Is there anything I can do for you right now? I could try to do some um, research or anything. Uh, I can examine it more. Where would you like to go from this? You have my interest and you have my help. Whatever could we, it is. Could we have Malcolm leave the Alluvion here so we can come back to you in the future, maybe? Uh, say again? Uh, could we have Malcolm leave the, the, the his Alluvion here so that we can come back to you at some point? Uh, yeah, but of course, yeah, that, that's something we could do. So you are regularly traveling through Alluvion? Whether That's we will it or no. Okay, so you are regularly, sometimes unwillingly traveling through <laughs> Alluvion. They were just suddenly unwilling the first time. Mm. Yes. Yes. 
that was kind of exciting. Oh, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Walk through, walk through such an amazing, um, after that, experiencing such a strange thing, it makes me almost envious. <laughs> Brother, I have a question, Connor says. Do you think the Shard would say anything about their birthmarks? I was thinking about that. Good mind, brother. I'm trying, he says. He smiles proudly. Yeah. <clears throat> if anyone would like to press forward so I can examine it with the shard. Oh, being in the shop, yeah, I'd walk right forward and lift my shirt. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Here <you> go, look. <sighs> I'm getting as close to the shard as I can. <laughs> sure, that's why. <laughs> There's like a dot dot dot. Right toe. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Gwenelle, when you look through um, the shard on the birthmark, you you actually somehow look down to the the very soul within Andrea. And it's strange because it looks like this birthmark is not only marking her physical body, but her soul itself is also marked. Both her body and soul are marked by this star birthmark. But you don't know why, but that's very curious. Um, you start thinking is that Nathan, Aveline, what do you think this could mean? I've never seen something like this. When um, you ask that question, the mirror shows a new scene. This time it shows the scene of a group of, it looks like mages and uh, soldiers or guards in uh, burgundy clothing very similar to the bird burgundy clothing that um, Cedric is wearing right now and they seem to be out in the water and they are lifting up some sort of mirror from the ocean they're picking up a note like they're picking up some sort of alluvion from an ocean and putting it onto a boat next to them and then Connor is seeing this from behind you and says wait brother Burgundy. You you recognize that, right? You've seen we've seen those people before. Or at least those outfits before. Back in the Temple of Sacred yeah. Ashes. Yes. But why? He asks. And then at that point the image disappears. As if that's exactly. all the information that either Eveline or or Nathan could give you. That's all the information they could give you. He looks at his arm where the army tool um, it would be. It looks like they were in the middle of the ocean yeah. somewhere. Where could that be? Connor says. The middle of the ocean? The middle of the ocean? Oh, I'm going out over the place. I'm my back. Like when this girl goes, um, arm. When Al goes over and pulls out a map and lies it out on the table. Okay. So it showed that he explains what he saw, and so that uh, what he saw is in the mirror and everything like that, and it was um, and all that and such. Cedric, you were in the middle I'm of the ocean. I'm going to try to see if I. Yeah, Theo's just gonna um, gesture to Cedric. You were in the ocean, were you not? Yes, and you said that they are wearing burgundy armor, and robes. like this, this color armor. Yes. Exactly. Oh, great. They have, apparent, I guess now they have the alluvion that me and Hugh traveled through. Uh, and Are they friends of yours? The army you're wearing? Are these your allies? Not at all. Hmm. They're the ones that injured Hugh. All right. Um, See. Is there anything that uh, Grinnell could think he could probably focus on to kind of like 
um, scry the area or something like that. Uh, For that um, and possibly. Are you are you not going to mention to them the thing I said about the soul, or are you not? Gonna, or are you just going to let that go? He's going to bring it up. Um, uh, he does that instead, of, but yeah. Um, the shard is review, um, revealing many interesting things, and I'm still trying to figure out how to explain one such thing. By the way, you could add, put, um, return to a normal position. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Looking slightly offended, she <laughs> 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 You, you don't have to. Just just put it out there, you know. Yeah, it, that can be comfortable, as I say. Yeah, it glows if I touch it. You want me to touch it? <laughs> can you float later? Yeah, Gwenelle, you'll be able to determine that the approximate location of this of this is taking place somewhere be, somewhere in the ocean between um, between Navara and Amaranthine. Hmm. He marks on the map. Um, that, that to be described for the area. That's at least where they picked up the mirror. Yeah. Uh, so at, at this point, if there is any extra research to be done, uh, Halliser would probably want to find out how long it would take to find out if it was something that we should all just hang around for a day for, or if it's something that's like, well, this is going to take me several weeks, in which case we can follow that next lead. The gist is you probably, uh, it'll probably take a bit of time, and it might be in your best interest to venture somewhere else in the meantime. Sure, sure. <laughs> okay. Best not to linger here in Orle if there's other places that you think might be more worth your time or individual people's time. Sure. Um, you ask, so where should we go next then? Um, I have well, a question before we decide. Um, mm -hmm. Do we know anything else about these people wearing burgundy? I'm very suspicious of those as well. Yeah, I've seen them so. previously. Have you? I don't where? Out of character, I am trying to remember the precise place. Yes, you saw them in Kirkwall. But yes, that was that was Kirkwall. But that that was, was when I was saving young Samson. Yes, and that was like five years ago. Yeah. It was a long time ago. Uh, I didn't have an opportunity to interact with them. There were Darkspawn. Did they seem like they were up to no good? In as much as scurrying away makes one suspicious, yes. But I don't know what they were doing. Um, I uh, was suddenly woke on a ship. Uh, fancy or funny enough, uh, I was in a crate. Uh, no idea how I got there. If it wasn't for Hugh, uh, I have no idea where I would be right now. And uh, this is where you came across these men in Burgundy? Yes. They were helping escort you elsewhere? Yes. Uh, uh, there was a name on the box. Uh, Trailiff? Trailiff? Thompson? Or what was his Wait. name? Trailiff Thompson. Trailiff tra 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 Thompson. Wait, Trailiff Thompson? Y yes. Do you know him? You know him? <laughs> I uh, I don't know him, but I I've been in the room with him once. I was eating, and he was there. Um, he's. Used to meet into Venter. He asked. Yes. Yes, he was uh, talking. To well, well, my master, because yeah, he, he was talking to my master in Tavinto, um before I came here, shortly before I came here, like a, well, a couple months. That but. sounds like another lead. Then he says, so far I'm hearing we can go to Eagle's Reach, we can go to Tavinter, or we could go to 
wherever the ocean mirror is now. But mm. that could be dangerous, considering who is in possession of it at the moment. Right. You were being shipped to Tevinta, then? I'm not sure where I was being shipped to. Uh, I just... And you have no idea why? No. Not a clue. No. Hmm. It's uh, something not right. There are a lot of things here that are not right. We need a direction. I suggest the mountains. I think you're right. Uh, my my master Bostwick might be able to shed some light on Trollif. Okay. Yeah. As much I, as the mountains might be able to help us with whatever Avarian legends have to do with our powers, these men could cause real harm to someone. Valid point. We don't know what they're up to. That troubles me. You're right. Safety first. The sea. Thoughts? It will be dangerous. But of course it will. I'm not really worried about it. <laughs> but the prize. Hmm. The prize is answers for one of us. Pointed look to Cedric. <laughs> Potential safety of others. And we can figure out our own riddles later. We might also be able to find out what they intend to do with these alluvions, why they have interest yes, in us. Exactly. <sighs> All and, right. And Cedric, for that matter. What? Yes, he seems like a pretty normal person. <laughs> aside you from, will you know. turn towards Cedric and say, "Does that sound like a good idea to you?" Well, if it's for, uh, if it will help shed some answers, uh, I'm honestly open to do any one of the things suggested. Uh, if you, if the group decides to go and find these burgundy men, uh, I will gladly aid you. All right. Uh, yeah. Very well. Yeah. We have a route. Um, also, before we leave, um, she is going to take a moment to speak with Gwynel. So, Gwynel, please address the group first, but yes. before we leave, I need a moment. Yes. Uh, so does Theo. So, I'd like to take a closer look real quickly before um, it was just, uh, the birth marks. Uh, Something interesting was revealed with the examination of that, so... You want to look at everyone's birth marks? Yes. Here. <laughs> I'm guessing I see slightly different things with each one because it's everyone's different soul, right? Yeah, slightly different, but the general shape is obviously a... Uh... Five point star, but they're you know they're not exactly the same, just similar. Is there though. anything different about the symb um, any symbology or any weird things I might have noticed that seems to appear in all of them that is consistent? I would say no. So nothing seems to be connecting them, but they all seem to be connected to something that um, that connects um, them to their soul. Is my um, would be Gwynel's theory, and such as he examines all of them. Correct. All right. He puts on the mirror and goes behind his desk and put um and put um closes the mirror into his chest. Mm -hmm. Puts his hands on his desk. These are not merely markings of the flesh that you all have. They are markings of your soul. Our soul. Explain. Yes. Explain, brother. Connor says he looks very. Almost disturbed by that, disturbed by that notion. 
I still have so much to understand here, but each of you are better than um, not king of connecting that mark that is that leads directly to a way for one to see enter with the mirror, see to the soul, and it is marked there. And it has a connection all back to something else. You are not all bound together, but you're all bound to something else. Something At least that is my theory. I don't like the idea of being bound to anything. Hmm. Same. Whatever this thing um, that you're bound to might be connected to the bracelet, perhaps connecting to your power source for it. That definitely rings a bell for Kenna. Mm -hmm. But she's probably not going to say anything. So. Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> I never realized that the soul itself could be marked somehow, Connor says. Yes. <clears throat> this will need a lot to... I would need it lots of time to try to examine these studies and get, um, be in contact with that regularly. If there was a way that I could join you, which I can't, I would come with so I could continue to try to examine and understand this. But I've had very busy with my own ventures. Seeing as we're chasing an alluvion anyway, and there happens to be an alluvion in the White Spire, perhaps we might return. Perhaps in that time you may aid us with some more research. Yes. yes, but I'd like to be able to keep in regular contact so I can help you. This is something important, and if it connects back to the strange men that when that is to be investigated, I wish to know more. Or this connected back to an investigation I did some time back, and I never did get a satisf um, satisfying conclusion to what their connection to all of this was. Hmm. Is is there a, a a magical way that we can contact you? Maybe your shard. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just borrow that. Raises an eyebrow. <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> Actually, yes, there is. If you could, I would love to find more about this out, and I would love to help you on this journey. Connor. Yes, brother. If they will be willing, I ask is you of you as well. Accompany them on the quest, and keep in contact with me. I will drink. I will have dreams sending to you to keep in communications. Me, Connor says. You want me to go with them? But of course. Uh... Connor, you already have many of the notes and relations for this and such, and you know my work as well as any. You're an inquisitive, if not somewhat impulsive, at points, young lines for that. I blame Delwyn for that. Uh, uh... <clears throat> Would do you think the first enchanter would just let me leave the circle without you? I've never done that before. Oh. I won't be far. I'll be able to. I'll be able to continue um, communicate with you through dream sending, as I said, and <sighs> you'll keep calm, close contact. Regular reports every day. <sighs> yeah, it's a little weird when Nathan does that. Connor says as he rubs the back of his neck. I'll have him knock first. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I guess if the first enchanter approves, sure, I guess I could go with them. Connor says, looking very uneased. Relate that to our unanswered question of those people and what um, can do this. And if I have to, I will speak to um, Celine to approve this. All right. I will not tell them too much about your particular quest, but I will inform them that the quest that they'll, um, I need my brother to investigate this since it relates back to people, the men in Burgundy. Mm. Um, Halliser is now eyeing Connor up and down like, is this somebody who can take care of himself? Or is this... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was worried about the same thing. I'm like... You... Well, he's not in his full armor, so he definitely... Which is why she's eyeing him. Right. So he looks like he can definitely... He looks physically um, capable of at least protecting himself in general. He's not a weakling by any means. 
Yeah. Um, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna judge anyone taller than me. So um, <laughs> you don't Liar. think that he's going to be super helpless if that's what you're talking about? But then again, you've never actually seen him in a fight. Exactly. Yeah. Um, she just wanted to make sure that it wouldn't be a case of well, I'd like to protect everyone else, but this kid doesn't know how to handle himself. But if he, as long as he looks capable, she'll put that faith in him. Okay. So, by the way, for what you have vaguely set up for him, would you say he's better with the sword and whatnot than Grenail, or about the same as the? Uh... He's better with the sword, not nearly as good with, like, classic magic. So mm -hmm. he's slightly more warrior than mage, but he's still a mage by blood. Mm -hmm. So his his choice weapon of choice is Liam's longsword, as opposed yes. to a staff. That is what he uses to channel his magic through. Spiritually. You'll, okay. You'll do fine. You'll do fine out All right. there, and I'll be there to help guide you. You've become way more adaptive at the sword than when I began teaching you. You've exceeded me. And there's not really much more I can teach you on that. And nothing better than practical application to learn the theories of magic than an adventure itself. This is your time. Your went for the things too. Help them. All right, he says. I guess I'll uh, pack up and get Liam ready, he says, as he starts to leave the room. Not, not yet. Not yet. If you're coming with us, you need to sit here and listen for a little bit. I need something to say. I have something to say. Uh, Cedric will stand up as if addressing the people in the room. Mm -hmm. He says, it seems that we have a bit of a adventure on our hands and it could be rather dangerous. Um, I know that I have not been as forthcoming about my feelings towards some of the members of the group. <clears throat> I stare, like, bluntly staring right at the mage, uh, I, Andrea. I, I never would have guessed you have a problem with mages. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. And I feel like that causes for, is cause for an explanation. Um, I come from Navarra. And before I was taken away, I was a Templar initiate. Um, so, and before I was taken away, I was accused of murdering a mage. I don't know if you want to trust me or not in this matter, but I did not do it. Um, in fact, I was going to go see the head Templar about this matter when I suddenly blacked out and appeared on that ship. Whether you trust me or not, we are about to embark on a possibly dangerous adventure. And I feel like it's best to just get everything laid out on the table. Um, that's all. And he'll sit back down. He will nod. I believe you, Cedric. And I. And I. Cedric will look at everyone and just give like a thankful nod. Just, like, thank you for listening to me, at least. It's a lot to swallow, honestly. Um, but, I mean, why would you tell me if it wasn't true, I guess? Because I would never would have heard of it otherwise, right? So, all right, just don't go all murdery on me and we'll be good. I think. I'm pretty Don't sure. Turn all blood magey on mm. me and we'll be okay. <laughs> it's not gonna be a problem. Good. Uh good. 
she will probably wait until the others have, like, I guess, stepped out of the room. Okay. Unless, I, or she's going to wait for as few people as possible. Yeah. Well, unless Hallie, like, looks at Theo in, in a kind of, yeah, I need you to leave. He'll, he'll linger no. around. No, if she actually needed everyone out, she'd just be like, leave. But no, she's, <laughs> right. she just, she wants a little bit of privacy, but not the end it's of the world set, if you're here. Okay. Such a cool excuse for himself. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll go, Cedric, go pack up. Uh, Grazikale will actually follow you, uh, Andrea. And okay. she's, she will like, uh, she actually looks like she's in a good mood. <laughs> this is funny. I would, I would ask her about that, but I think you want us to wait till next time. Yeah, wait till next time. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> if I might take your attention one more moment, please, Senior Enchanter. Yes, you have my ear. I am pursuing some information. that I believe you might be able to help me with. I need to speak to the left hand of the divine. Mm -hmm. My journey will eventually take me to wherever it needs to take me. And if I have to make my pleas to the most holy, I absolutely will. But I would like to not have to disturb her with this sort of thing. So if you know where the left hand of the divine is, it is important that I speak with him. I will put a note in contact with him tonight to make him aware of this. Thank you. Gwinnell, you do know, though, that the last you heard, Lielden was on his way to Ferelden. He had business in the Amaranthine area. Mm -hmm. I'll see what I can do to inform them, but it would take some time for him to stop and to recover, um, stop what he's doing. He's an amaranth thing. Can't That's fine. More. If I need to come to him, uh, I will be very happy to do so. Just don't step out of any strange mirrors in front of him. <laughs> very well. Thank you. What was that? That was some weird feedback, is what that was. <laughs> so yeah, um, that was all she had to say. She will bow and she will excuse herself. <laughs> Theoban wanted to talk to Gwenael as well. Oh, good, I'm back. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, is Halissa like leaving or is she sticking around? Yes. No, she's okay. Leaving. All right. So as she's leaving, he kind of gives a. Uh, respectful nod, Carlos says yeah. she leaves. Um, and uh, says to Gwinnell, <clears throat> I happened to speak with uh, Cogs earlier. He mentioned your uh, project. Oh, yes. Ooh, for a second, I thought you were going to ask me to a drinking contest. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you want to lose, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I have gone to enough drinking contests with dwarves and such. You drink one dwarf under a table, and they all want to drink um, drink you and to try to drink you under a table. Um, you could not. You could not drink me under a table, my friend. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. <laughs> yeah. I believe that this is quite a vast undertaking, but uh, I believe that what you're doing is important, and I was wondering if you would need any help in the matter. I don't know much of you, but yes, I'd be willing to discuss that. I, as much I, assistance as possible is great. I'm not by any means rich, but I am willing to give you some money to assist with the project. I happen to have made quite a hefty sale of my poisons. I'd be willing to donate <coughs> potions, um, but I'd be willing to donate. <laughs> I'm sorry, um, did you say poisons? Potions. Uh, potions. <clears throat> yes, the open's like, did I say poisons? I said potions. Potions. <laughs> potions. Oh, I to say. Um, <laughs> yes. Freudian slip. Um, 
And yes, I don't claim to have any special expertise in engineering, but I am a dwarf and I am skilled in certain areas. Do you have any ability in folding of lyrium? As much as any dwarf. And of course, I do come from uh, an upbringing that had a lot of um, lyrium trade, so I, I'm quite educated. Gwenelle, while you're having this conversation, something within you, uh, like, starts signaling in your head, and you know that when that happens, it means that your shard is reacting on its own, and if you look back at the uh, case, you see that it's it's indeed reacting as if it's trying to show you something else. Uh, one moment. Okay. Opens. Gwenelle, when you pick up the uh, shard, uh, if you take the shard back out of the case again, it feels like it's willing you to move it towards Theoban. And when you move the shard towards Theoban, you see a new image appear in the mirror. This mirror is some sort of chamber, and you recognize in the chamber is the Anvil of the Void. You then see a bunch of dwarf-sized looking figures removing the Anvil of the Void from its stand as if they were taking it somewhere, and then the scene fades. The dwarves look like they are dressed the way that the Carta would dress. Uh, if Theo's going to notice that she's using the sharp things, is everything okay? Did, did you see something? He all show um, a, um, an image of it. Does this mean anything to you? You'll see that image that I just described to you. He's uh, gobsmacked. Um, that's the anvil. Yes. And those are Carter. Mm -hmm. Carter have the anvil. What, what, what are they going to do with it? What else can you see? What, there has to be more. There's nothing left. There's nothing else. That is all the shard has been able to show me. I'm sorry. I have to. I have to go to Ozma. I have to stop this. Uh, by, by the way, um, less glitter dust, uh, more embryum for the uh, potion. But yeah, <laughs> don't stop this. I will. I will have some of my um, business contacts keeping this um, contact to a. You said your character is a merchant, right? Yeah. In craft. More additional merchants that are interested in their productivity and stuff for this line may be um, interesting. So I'll review my information from what um, hopefully my female can might be able to tell me. Um, and I'll have written to you and such. You do seem to have something more important to worry about right now, so... Uh, Whatever this mean, uh, means to you, I hope that it turns out well for you. And thank you. It's not something. That you and uh, he goes into his pocket and uh, gives uh, gives hands over five sovereigns to Gwinnell for for your project. I hope it helps. He unlocks the um, chest that he's holding the funds and that um, that people make for donations. Boop. Nice. And Theo's going to look like he's seen a ghost as he walks out of Winnell's office. And we'll end the session Good luck there. to you all. Okay. Okay. Whoa. Yay. So, yeah, you've got a lot of choices to make. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> a decision to make. Thanks for having a cameo, Ray. Yes, thank you. Yeah, Ray. thank you. That was great. <laughs>